Hello. Uh, it's the 4th of July, 2021. And uh, happy Independence Day, such as it is. Not that we're independent or happy as a country, but, uh, you know, there's actually, I think I've done uh, at least one video talking about this general topic, but um, <coughs> I'm going to talk about the radicalism of the American Revolution. Um, basically, um, the American Revolution was was a leftist movement you know it was uh or it was a it was a liberal movement uh which later you know liberalism became known as leftism but uh but like revolutionaries were called whigs which whig means liberal uh, it's the it was the original name of the liberal party was the whig party so, um, and, you know, opponents of the revolution, like people who sided with the Britain and with King George, uh, were called Tories, which is, means a conservative, you know, we still call conservatives Tories, you know, like the British conservatives, and they're the same party, you know, um, so it's ironic, like, for instance, that the, the Republican Party of the U.S. is uh, an official sister party or some, you know, basically with the conservatives. Meanwhile, like, our revolution was explicitly, you know, if anything else, if nothing else, it was explicitly anti-Tory. It was explicitly um, against everything that the Tories stood for. So, um, it's very odd that, like, you can't be, you can't really be a patriotic U.S. citizen and be a conservative, you know, um, there might be something that you, that people might call conservatism, but I'm saying, like, as soon as you even call it conservatism, you're showing so much disrespect for the origins of our country, for the thousands who died fighting the Tory scum, that you're already not a patriotic American. I mean, maybe nobody is. May, you know, people are very selfish. People are very, uh, they're not, <laughs> people are, in any country are not like hugely, you know, socially responsible and honest and everything so this is not like just to uh, just to American conservatives I mean in a way I give American conservatives a lot more credit even though they're showing that they are not American patriots because if they were patriots they would denounce anything to do with conservatism um, but at least they're not as bad as most of these American liberals who um, call who would call themselves liberals but are actually conservatives. So that's that's worse, and that's probably the majority of uh, liberals in, in America are, are authoritarian. You know, um, I mean, a lot of them authoritarianism is their main outlook and yet they call themselves liberals so that's worse but yeah anyway modern american politics is is uh is pretty i mean it's a mess like semantically it's a total mess and part of that is because conservatism is terrible and so it can't win usually you know like it can only win um by like posing as other stuff and by like uh you know pitting people against each other 
So basically like real conservatism, which is just the divine right of kings to absolute rule and, you know, in church and state, etc. cetera, um, that's hard to sell to the public because while people are stupid and people are cucked, they're not always stupid and they're not always cucked in every way so it's, it's a hard thing to sell people um whereas if you so basically conservatism had to come back and pose as liberalism and and then they were helped by the fact that they basically took over all the political parties and certainly the main political parties um so both i mean in a sense the leaders of politics are always going to be conservative because or i mean as long as they're we're in a capitalist system because they're going to have the most power and so they're you know the the wealthier people tend to be more conservative and then they're funded by other wealthy people um but um you know american conservatism like basically you have both um of the two factions of of uh you know people who who unironically watch like cnn or fox and just like agree with everything that every yahoo says on there like every paranoid boomer take or whatever like neither of the i mean i would say like in general probably most of those people are conservative on both sides like the, the cnn watchers are conservative and the fox news people are conservative um but but there's a lot of like um positions that are held by the modern conservatives that are left is liberal positions that are you know um rooted in the liberal tradition so when the quote-unquote liberals go up against that and they say no no um, you know freedom of speech is a you know white supremacist dog whistle or something like you see that um yeah there's no real like the the, de the democrats and the republicans neither of them are more liberal or conservative than each other i mean i would just tend to say they're both right wing but that doesn't mean that both both of them might not have some liberal um uh and you know leftist uh, positions and like for the for the republicans their leftist position is supporting at least nominally supporting you know the um the bill of rights and that's very important you know like i know that in among like college lefties who leftism is about like just hating the u.s and you know they i think for the average person like they they would greatly probably want to ignore the extent to which the average working class american likes the bill of rights and wants it to be enacted you know because i think for the modern left like a lot of the left is so focused only on identity politics to the extent that even when there are good things that are um, parts of the american tradition um they can't acknowledge it or they have to shit on it or whatever you know like um but anyway so in in the american revolution um there was a strong like radical faction that tended to be the um appalachian faction basically the western frontier faction which was the backbone of the revolution at least in in much of the country or probably most of the country um you know like 
the Pennsylvania line was which was largely composed of the Western Pennsylvanian Presbyterians um, since the Eastern um, Quakers and you know Amish and stuff were pacifists uh, the Pennsylvania army was heavily um, heavily Presbyterian and you know Ulster Scott and you know dominated by the the Western frontiersmen and so you know they were very radical they they um, the Pennsylvania line uh, went on strike at one point because they weren't they hadn't gotten paid for like uh, I'm not sure how long or you know they were basically getting screwed over by the by the officers or it seemed that you know like the officers were screwing over the men and and um you know they were trying to push through congress something so that there could be some huge payout to the officers of the revolution but not to like the the common uh, soldiers so anyway like um they you know there was a lot of socialism like in pennsylvania when they um when they declared independence basically the same week that of the fourth of july whatever that they set in motion the I think maybe on the second or the third they called um an election i don't know if they held an election or they um, called for an election to have a uh, state um, constitutional convention for pennsylvania because at that time pennsylvania's uh, government was seen to be basically still controlled by the quakers and since the Quakers were pacifists and a lot of them had Tory sympathies, um, especially the more powerful, wealthy ones who, who controlled uh, Pennsylvania, um, you know, the revolution was seen as that basically, you know, that they were, um, that they're, they were illegitimate to hold power at that time in such a situation. So they basically the revolutionaries, uh, mostly the Ulster Scott Presbyterians, basically just created their own new government for the state. Um, they held a new convention, and they created the most, um, you know, radical uh, uh, constitution of of in America and. Um, you know, I think they gave the vote to all, um, all taxpayers, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure. So it like was much broader franchise than anywhere else in, uh, well, in most of the world, basically, um, was basically considered to be democracy by and especially by the uh, conservatives it was looked on with horror as democracy which like in those days it was just assumed by all the you know most of the people with money and people who you know the conservatives or whatever that democracy was a terrible thing like and democracy is like the way nowadays people clutch pearls about communism and they're like communism like just the word is like the specter you know that haunts europe like at that time democracy was the specter that was haunting the world so um so yeah pennsylvania they managed to um you know have a relatively radical revolution in the state and um you know, they gave uh, kind of a Bill of Rights, um, pretty similar in a lot of ways to our Bill of Rights. Um, some of the other states also had, like Virginia had a pretty good Bill of Rights on a lot of points. 
Um, but, but yeah, Pennsylvania was more radical. In the Constitutional Convention for Pennsylvania, the Appalachian, you know, um, I believe it was the, um, the Western, yeah, the Appalachian Party, the Radical Party, the Presbyterian Party, put forward a motion that there should be a law against anybody owning too, no, too much wealth, basically that. And I think, or they were talking about property. So I don't, I doubt they were talking about like money, but they were talking about land, basically. And I mean, I think a lot of them had the Penn family in mind because the Penn family still own much of the state. Um, but, um, but either way, it was just stated as a general principle that if anybody owns too much property, like basically what Bill Gates is doing now, buying up all the farmland in America, that should be illegal because they have the power to like overthrow the rest of the country, you know, like it's like a monopoly. Um, and that unfortunately didn't pass, you know, I think it was some of the Eastern, um, you know, as far as I know, I don't know the vote on that, but I think that was the, that was the Appalachian party that, um, was promoting that, but also some of the radical Philadelphians who were uh, in league with them, like the, um, Thomas Paine, Benjamin Franklin, um, I'm not sure what Franklin's position was on that or Paine's, um, but that was uh, considered to be put forth by the Radical Party, but fell shy of a majority in the convention. Um, but it shows some of the ideas that were prevalent at the time. You know, like a lot of the most radical revolutionaries were um, squatters, uh, particularly Ulster Scots Presbyterians, who were in many ways the backbone of the American Revolution. Um, you know, the revolution was often described as a um, an Ulster Scots Scotch Irish revolution, um, and you know those people were known as as squatters. Basically, they were notorious in the different colonies, you know, during colonial times for just finding land that nobody was using um, on, on the pen, often on the pens estates or other, you know, the estates of other uh, wealthy aristocrats and just, you know, building a cabin and, and just living there without paying anybody. Um, so, you know, and when they were um, like the land agent for the Penn family, who was the one responsible for settling Appalachia or, you know, Pennsylvania, Appalachia and Pennsylvania with, um, the Ulster Scots Presbyterians. Um, you know, he brought them there basically, he was an Ulster Scot himself, but he was a Quaker. Um, and I mean, he was a, fascinating person but he definitely underestimated um his countrymen the other ulster scots that he brought there because he basically said like you know they were scared that they were going to be attacked by um by american indians uh on their western on the western uh flank i guess of the pennsylvania settlements so his idea, which was basically to um, bring the Ulster Scots and put them as like a human shield with by, by offering them cheap land, um, put them as a human shield. So A, like they'll probably get killed first before like they come to, if they're going to come, you know, if any of the... Um, I'm not sure which nations or tribes or whatever we're, we're attacking, but like, you know, if they're going to attack, they'll just attack these guys. So we'll just, it's a human shield because we know they're poor as hell. And they were basically a human shield in Ireland um, for like the glorious revolution against, uh, against James the second and 
arguably later. So like, anyway, so he just thought like, they'll be cool. They'll not only get killed for us, um, but they will also pay us a lot of rent and help us, you know, out of our financial difficulties. So, because I think the Penn family was in a bunch of debt or something, I don't know, even though they owned like half the world or half, or, you know, at least Pennsylvania. Um, so anyway, like that, he, he, he said that like when they were confronted that, that basically the Ulster Scots, um, once they came over here, they would just, yeah, they would just set up wherever on the Penn's land and just build their cabin and start farming, do their thing, not paying anybody money. And so he said when they were confronted and, and asked about this, they replied, you know, we thought you solicited for people. You wanted us to come. Here we are. You know, this land is not being in being used, so we should we have a right to use it. Like, you know, that was their philosophy and that was a widespread philosophy in those times. Um, when people understood justice, I think a lot better than I think a lot of modern people a lot of modern people I think just take property relations so much for granted that they don't understand that it could be any other way you know like that you could just like just do that just build a cabin somewhere and have a farm and not have to pay somebody that it's just an arbitrary governmental uh, decision to make everybody have to pay for just living on the earth um, so anyway that was a major radical element in the revolution um, you know they supported uh, in Pennsylvania they did price controls of certain things during the revolution when it seemed that merchants were gouging uh, soldiers and stuff um you know the radicals uh out you know outlawed slavery in pennsylvania um and and then and then in vermont the government that had been copied off of the pennsylvania constitution uh by the vermont radicals um who were also squatters rights people and fly, fighting against landlords. Um, they also abolished slavery there. So those were the two first places in America that abolished slavery. Um, and they nearly abolished slavery in Kentucky and Tennessee. The vote was uh, relatively close. But once they won that vote, they made sure it never got that close again. They basically, you know, ran the anti-slavery people out of out of the state to a large extent. A lot of them went up to Ohio. Um, so anyway, like, I think it's a mistake to the way people are just like, oh, the American Revolution. I mean, I understand for a lot of people, like, especially... Um, like people of color or whatever, like I fully understand if they don't identify with the U.S. history or the American Revolution or whatever. But for people, especially I think who are descended from the these people, like you should know the truth. Like you should know like, yeah, there was hypocrisy, especially among certain people, but there were also ways in which the revolutionary generation was much more radical than we are now. You know, they were demand like they were demanding free land, and when they didn't get it, they just said, "F you, we're taking it." It's literally what they did, and you know, the landlords would come, fight them, burn them out, and then they'd just come back and rebuild, time and again. Um, you know, there was a lot of land reform movements, uh, during the, even during the colonial period, um, and then during the early America and then culminating in the Homestead Act, which was led by, a, you know, Homestead movement was led by a 
Ulster Scots Presbyterian, uh, Tennis East Tennessee, you know, Appalachian man, Andrew Johnson. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I don't think you should look to the revolution for heroes per se. Like, I don't think that was ever the point of the American revolution was never to make heroes. It was to enthrone principles, defend principles, um, defend liberty, you know, defend rights, promote the, the, um, welfare of the people and of humanity uh but not to say that like we're gonna replace the the adulation of kings by their you know like sycophantic courtiers with um doing the same thing towards the founding fathers or the presidents or anything like that um the founding fathers idea is um it's at least problematic because some of the founding fathers were at least on paper you know like they really did push some things forward it seems like in terms of or you know they were arguably like aligned with the better uh movement and with good principles and in, in what in how they actually uh made a difference in the world but there are some of the other founding fathers that were arguably the opposite arguably like saboteurs and and tories in disguise um so and so yeah i'm not like big on you know worshiping the founders or worshiping you know or having uh statues everywhere like i don't think that's um it's not useful but it's more about like the good things that they did do um you know, like rising up to 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 uh, the same heights that they reached, and then hopefully.